Yeah, credit to Maryland. Uh, amazing effort by them today. It's certainly the best Maryland team that I've seen. I uh, thought they did a fantastic job of starting fast and, you know, um, just dominating in every phase of the game. And as a Maryland alum, I'm, you know, really impressed and really proud of what Coach Tillman and Coach Bernhard and Coach Benson have done with that that program. Um, it's it's uh, it's impressive to see, and you know, even though we lost today, I'm um, just really proud of my team of, of getting ourselves back to this moment and um, you know, giving it our best. And uh, I think that we have uh, nothing to hang our head about. Chris, when you kind of size up, you mentioned comparing with other teams. You were in this spot, exact same spot a year ago. How much better is this bunch than the one that you saw last year? Wow, that's it's hard to you know, kind of put a number to it or anything, you know, metric kind of measurable, but, you know, they move the ball better than any team I've seen. And uh, they just play really selfless on offense and they've got so many weapons at attack and, and through the midfield, um, you know, they can they can really find a, a, a different way to beat you every possession. And so, um, you know, on the back end, their defense is also really stout and the goalie saves everything you put on cage. And so uh, I, I'd say they're substantially better than last year. With Viner Foregates, you've often heard the term, we make your company work. What that means to us is every ticket, every call, all the time, is handled by our U.S.-based tech support. If you are tired of waiting on hold, if you're tired of the confusion of calling for tech support, call Viner Foregates. We'll help to make your company work by taking care of every ticket, every call, all the time. When, when you size up the, the first quarter today, like you had some opportunities, you got, got some stops, and just couldn't cash in. I mean, were you kind of feeling like, uh oh, like that was your chance to stay in it, and, the, and it was a matter of just kind of keeping the tie today? Yeah, I mean, we wanted to start fast. We knew that Maryland was going to start very fast and, and play with a lot of emotion and play incredibly tough. And we wanted to show zone early in the game to try to, you know, maybe negate that three to four goal cushion that they got on us last year. Um, but we don't play a lot of zone, you know, and we played a little bit sparingly at the end of the season. And we wanted to take a chance, you know, against a team of this caliber, you know, something they hadn't seen a lot out of us and maybe see if that would be effective. It wasn't. So we had a transition back into man to man. and. You know, partnering that with not winning any face-offs, it really made it hard for us to generate a lot of meaningful possessions. Can you talk about that play at the FOGO and, and how good Weirman was today? Yeah, Weirman is, you know, again, the best face-off guy I've, I've ever seen out of Maryland. Um, you know, he's an athlete, not just a face-off guy. He can score, he can play defense, he can scrap for loose balls. You know, he really sets the bar for that position right now in the country. and. Um, you know, I love our guys. I love Tommy Burke. I love, uh, you know, um, uh, Norton, you know, and, and, and all of our face-off unit. But, you know, Weirman right now is at a different level, and he's, he's hearing the whistle, and he's, he's winning every possession. And, um, you know, he really uh, did a great job today. Yeah. Uh, Coach, what was the message to your team after the game? Our message was just keep your head up, you know, stay positive. We have a lot to be proud of. You know, we're back-to-back -back conference champs. We went on a 10 goal winning or 10 game winning streak at the end of the year after you know a tough preseason and you know we designed it that way um, so that we could handle a moment like this a little better than we did last year. So we lost some close games to teams that gave us their best game and um, you know with where we are geographically we have some challenges when it comes to practice. You know we had a practice indoors um, on a half field for about a month and so you know playing better teams um, that are giving you their best game and losing tight games. Um, it makes it hard to really, you know, focus on fixing those things with quick turnarounds. And, and um, so we had to weather that storm. And I think it made us more resilient. I thought I think it made us better. And once we got into conference play, you know, we were able to really settle in and get back into a weekly schedule for every game. And that, that really helped us develop as a team, you know, defensively and offensively. And I thought we got substantially better this year. So everybody in our conference gave us their best game as well. And to get back to this point and to win a play-in game, you know, that we didn't have to win last year, uh, I give them a lot of credit, and I give a lot of credit to our seniors and our grad students who came back for another year. And I'm just really proud to be their coach. You know, I, I don't know if I've ever been this proud in my life of, of a group. So um, I think they got to keep their heads up and you know take this, take these lessons and, and, and let transition it into the next phase of their life. Yeah, uh, I mean, you already kind of touched on it, but you know, Maryland got got a couple early goals, but you're able to shut them out for the last nine minutes of that first quarter. You know, was that promising, or did anything change in the second quarter? You know, when they started to come to you? Yeah, I mean, you know, as I said, we, we transitioned into man to man, and I think that that certainly helped us, you know, apply a little bit more ball pressure so they weren't able to just get whatever they wanted. Um, 
you know, but they really did a good job at got towards the end of the second quarter of really responding and, and pouring it on us, you know, when we weren't winning faceoffs. And, um, you know, when your offense is playing under that type of pressure every possession, you know, and your defense is really tired um, on a hot day, you know, it's, uh, it's hard to really generate momentum uh, when you're not winning faceoffs. So um, I just gave credit to Maryland. I think that they, their game plan was fantastic. You know, they're really strong in all phases of their team. And, um, you know, you just gotta, you gotta keep them uncomfortable, which is hard to do. Coach, is there, when you guys do get the chances and possessions and they capitalize off some of the mistakes and that when they rattle off nine straight in that, in that second quarter, did you sense this uh, kind of feeling of being deflated at all from, from your team or anything like that? You know, um, I, it wasn't really deflated. I think it was just, you know, shocked. Um, because we haven't been beaten like that, you know, all season. Um, since the Duke game, which we were winning at halftime, you know, uh, we haven't had that big of a margin laid on us. And so, you know, we, we really wanted to just regroup at halftime and take a deep breath, make some adjustments to the zone, try to come back out and try to kind of get back in the game um, and also, you know, figure out some different things at the faceoff X. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we've come back from nine goals down this season, eight goals down this season. And, you know, we, we relied on that experience towards the end of the season when we got down on Stony Brook and UMBC. And, and it really served us well. But today, it really didn't matter. You know, uh, Maryland is just such a strong team that, and they're well coached that they don't allow you to um, climb back in easily. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was tough sledding. But again, credit to our team for, you know, sticking with it and finishing the game. Jack. Uh, Coach, how are they kind of able to take away Thomas and Micah today? It seemed like you guys couldn't really get anything going from, from up top. I thought they did a great job of keeping him on the perimeter. You know, in the first half, we were kind of trying to get Thomas the ball off ball, you know, off of movement. And, and they did a great job of kind of pressing him and keeping a pole on him, not allowing him to really, you know, dodge or get downhill. You know, he had a couple of opportunistic dodges, but didn't, didn't amount to anything. So in the second half, we started to, you know, try to dodge with him more and have him create a little more so that he could get some more touches. But um, they did a great job of quick slides and their goalie made great saves. And so, uh, you know, with Mike, you know, he's a great shooter. You know, he had a, had a couple opportunities today, but he's not a huge initiator for us. And I thought they did a good job of, you know, staying pressed out on him on the perimeter and, um, you know, making it hard for him to set his feet and get a shot off. What can you say about um, Ryan's play in the case today? I mean, the guy's a warrior. I, I love Ryan Cornell. I'm going to miss him tremendously. He's an unbelievable leader, you know, coming back for his fifth year, and he battles uh, unlike anybody I think I've ever coached. And, you know, he kept us in the game. I mean, Maryland could have beaten us a lot worse if it weren't for Ryan today. And so, uh, you know, he's, he's great in the cage, out of the cage, but he's honestly most valuable off the field with what he does with our culture and our team and leading these guys to, to work hard every single day in practice and have confidence in moments like this. So. Ryan, I'm, I'm really sad to see him go, but I thought he did a great job today. Anything else for Coach? Yeah. Um, 18 seniors on this group, obviously, there's going to be a little bit of some decision making on who can take the extra year, who wants to take the extra year, stuff like that. How do you guys kind of take what happened today, um, figure out things you need to address, and kind of push the program forward to kind of try and reach that next level? Yeah, well, you know, I think we've already seen some um, gains in the recruiting aspect, kids that you know, want to go to a team that can win their conference and get to the NCAA tournament. So we're excited about some of the newcomers that we have coming in. And I think in regards to who's going to come back, you know, we're going to have to take a deep breath here and regroup this week and see who, you know, can do it financially, who, who you know, really wants to, to jump back in and get into a, you know, a certificate program or a master's program at Vermont. Um, but for right now, I just want them to kind of take a moment to themselves. I've asked so much of them this season, and it's been a really trying season. I just want them to, to settle in a little bit and uh, we'll have some exit interviews in a couple weeks and you know see where we're at. But we're excited for the future. Uh, the recruiting's been solid and the future is very bright in Vermont. We just uh, you know have to stay the course. The secret is there is no secret. It's just working hard. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.